In this new world, there is no I, only the collective consciousness of the hive. Interconnected and hardwired by technology and the pursuit of perfection. Self, as we once knew it, has been replaced by a central authority, a database of the collective mind of which resistance is futile. Breakthroughs in science and technology are revolutionizing our world. Leading companies like Google can now predict and change our future behavior. Advertising is no longer targeted to the masses, but rather to us individually based on our own unique search inputs and paradigm. We share everything with the hive. So much so that cookies and bots now track our every move. Are we sharing too much? And what are the long-term implications of this paradigm shift? Technology is for profit, and the more we allow it to influence our daily lives, the more it can potentially take from us, sell us, and give to its creators. If in this new world, the individual becomes the collective, part of the masses that links back to the hive mind, then who controls the hive? And what are its motives? At every waking and non-waking moment, our life experience is being data mined, integrated within our own reality. We share our photos on Facebook, comment on an interesting YouTube video, search for specific keywords, all while each action is logged into a computer database. Elements of the future can be seen even now in our younger generations, addicted to their cell phones, Facebook, and Twitter accounts. They lack traditional communication and social skills, yet thrive in the non-physical world where virtual reality and digital communication is at warp speed. What will the postmodern world look like? And what will these people contribute to society and the physical world if anything at all. Could they even survive without this technology? Marketers have long wished to better understand what makes us tick. Much like Pandora learns what songs we like and Netflix which movies to watch, intuitive technology is learning our behavior and choosing our options for us based on inputs and sequences of events that will lead it to the most profitability for the company. But are these recommendations actually what we want? And what are we giving up in return? Google is introducing a brand new technology called Google Glass. Glass is a marketer's dream and also a gateway into the human mind. It will go with us everywhere, share with us everything, and actively record and document our daily life. It will take photos on command, remind us of birthdays, and act as a virtual enhancement to the human mind. Like a master chess player, the algorithm predicts our next move far in advance so that it knows exactly what we want before we do. It knows its end user intimately so that it can place better ads more frequently and subconsciously. It puts a solution to our daily wants, needs, and desires literally at our fingertips. Want to learn Spanish? Google Glass will translate it in real time. Feeling depressed? Google Glass will offer directions to the nearest bar or suggest a flash sale site for retail therapy. The more impressions, the more ad revenue. And the more targeted the ads are, the better chance of a future sale. While these advancements are exciting and seem harmless at first, it leaves one to question if we have welcomed a Trojan horse into our lives that will destroy an aspect of our world that is necessary for our survival. The integration of technology with human beings has long been sought after, and it is often thought to have enhanced the quality of our lives. But where does it fall short? Can technology replace the beauty of the unpredictable or the mystery of what it means to be human? 
computer didn't invent the light bulb, nor did it paint the Sistine Chapel, or hit the perfect note at the climax of a Beethoven symphony. Man's greatest achievements, one could argue, have been created and achieved by man, not machines. So why would we allow technology to change that? Can technology replace the beauty of a sunset, the scent of a flower, or warm embrace of a loved one? And even if it could, would we really want to replace what's real with what's not? In the 1950s, suburbia exploded in the United States as a result of rapid technological innovation. The rise of the automobile encouraged, for the first time in American history, mass migration out of cities. The government also played a crucial role in this development. But is this what the people wanted? Did real estate developers at the time simply respond to an existing want? build and then profit from that want? Or did big business create that want for the sole purpose of profit and then sell that want to the American people through advertising, propaganda, and the vast commercialization of our society? Did the people want Google Glass? Or did Google create that want for them? Is it the chicken or the egg? Much of this mystery is the beauty of what it means to be human, because only a human can ask these questions, ponder the unknown, and interpret its consequences. By allowing technology to fill this role, do we not create a self-fulfilling prophecy that closes the door to innovation and new life experience? A computer doesn't know what we do not like, or what we might not know we like yet. It can only interpret the inputs we have previously given it, and this is an obvious limitation. The merger of technology with human beings has the ability to blur how we define what it means to be human. The future hive mind will likely know more about us than we know about ourselves, and it will be a thousand moves ahead of us. Companies like Apple with their iPhones, iPads, and iPods have dramatically changed our world. And as significant as this change has been, imagine what Google can do with Google Glass. Could we perhaps be on the verge of a brave new world where technology is able to transcend both time and space? Can technology transcend our own consciousness? Or will it be the end of it? Why does our society continue to treat the symptoms of disease without first addressing the root cause? Obesity, anxiety, and depression are obvious epidemics, but we do not ask the question why. We treat depression with psychotropic medications and obesity with cure-all pills, but we never ask if these diseases are simply symptoms of our behavior. Are people naturally depressed and obese? Or are these side effects of caging human beings in cubicles for hours at a time, limiting their physical activity in real-world interaction with other people? Why do we even need physical bodies anymore, if all that matters are the emails and texts we send? We blame guns for school shootings, while human beings are behind the barrel of the gun that pulled the trigger. Do guns kill people, or do people? Using the hive mind, politicians will be able to tap into the collective conscious in order to win elections, influence social change, control propaganda, and predict civil unrest. Wall Street will use the hive mind for market manipulation and arbitrage. Hackers will exploit it for personal gain. The people, government, and systems that control the hive mind will also control the collective behavior and ultimately the actions of all people and all things. But can these people be trusted? The hive mind will predict future crime, will know your thoughts, and will understand the patterns of your behavior. 
It will log even the slightest tick, thought, or agitation. And it will adapt itself to your inputs. To resist the hive mind will be to resist God. And it will blur the lines between what's real and what's virtual. Many may lose their sense of self because the self will be merged with the technology. Reality will become non-reality. For your own protection, you will be monitored at all times. The state will convince you that they know best because they control the hive mind and you the input. You will trust the state because they have learned your behavior. They will monitor your heart rate, blood pressure, and other vital signs. They will alert you to your next doctor's appointment and tax return. You will obey the state without even knowing it, having been reprogrammed by the hive mind which knows best and controls everything. Your individual liberty, creativity, and free thinking will be moot. Any resistance to the hive? Ruthlessly challenged. How can you argue with the collective mind, the collective conscious, when the technology knows everything? Are you you, or are you them? The next war won't be fought on a battlefield or a remote place overseas, but within your own mind. The internal battle to control it, manipulate it, and use it for profit. Like a share of stock, your mind will have a quantifiable dollar value, of which the owners demand dividends. Human beings could likely evolve to not even being human at all, but simply Borgs connected to a collective mind. Two legs and arms no longer needed, just a brain with the ability for the state to control it. The more we allow this technology to enter our daily lives, the easier it will be to lose our sense of self, freedom, and purpose. The pursuit of happiness will become our pursuit. But whose pursuit exactly is it? And who does it benefit? Does any of this technology actually make us any happier? Does it enrich our lives? Or prohibit it? Do people prefer a world of constant email alerts, texts, and status updates? Do they prefer sitting in front of a computer screen long hours at a time? Or do they prefer real human interaction, experience, and physical activity? Can technology replace the experience of the birth of your first child and the heartbeat of your loved one? Or is it just that? A replacement of what's real and therefore an interference of nature. Are genetically modified foods making us any healthier? Helping us to live longer lives? Or are they causing cancer and other ailments? Is constantly surfing the internet in the pursuit of the next viral video, website, or tweet really what defines us? This transhumanism could very well be creating our own hell on earth, where it is very difficult for people to resist the allure of a fundamental transformation of the human condition. The promise of anti-aging, artificial enhancement of human intellectual, physical, and psychological capacities may prove difficult to resist, but it may also prove the end of our humanity the downfall of our civilization, and the end of our reality. It blurs the moral and ethical boundaries of what it means to be human. A being with its own consciousness, its own mind, and free will. It redefines who we are. And is that really something we want technology to decide for us.